Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY24 earnings conference call of Kalyan Jewelers India Limited. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantee of future performance and involves risk and uncertainty that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Agarwal from Strategic Growth Advisors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, uh, and thank you for joining us on Kalyan Jewelers India Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Ramesh Kalyan Raman, Executive Director, Mr. Sanjay Raghuraman, CEO, Mr. V. Swaminathan, CFO, Mr. Sanjay Mehrutra, Head of Strategy and Corporate Affairs, and Mr. Abraham George, Head of Investor Relations and Treasury. I hope everyone got an opportunity to go through our financial results and investor presentation uploaded on company's website and stock exchanges. Uh, we will begin the call with opening remarks from management, following which we will have the forum open for question and answer session. Uh, before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in the call, today's call may be forward-looking in nature and disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Mr. Ramesh Kalyan Raman, Executive Director of Kalyan Jewelers India Limited, to give his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. So, good evening and let me welcome everyone to the call. Q4 has been fantastic. We ended the financial year on an excellent note. We recorded consolidated revenue growth of approximately 34% and PVT growth was uh, approximately 44 and this is after adjusting the one-time write-off in the previous financial year uh, regarding the, the asset which we, the write-off uh, of the asset improvement in PBT margin during the quarter was driven largely by higher share of revenue from franchise showrooms for the full financial year we recorded a revenue in excess of 18,500 crore and a patch of 596 crore. We began the financial year setting certain targets around the key objectives of revenue growth, improvement in cash flow and return on capital, and rewarding shareholders. It gives me immense satisfaction to reflect back on the targets. Let me spend a few minutes uh, here. In line with our already announced showroom network expansion plan, we launched 58 new Kalyan showrooms through the capital efficient FOCO model in India during the last financial year. We are also successfully converted two existing showrooms in South India to franchised ones. The year also saw the launch of our first franchised showroom in the Middle East. While we reduced our non-GML loans in India by 435 crore, we have been successful in securing additional GML limits of 170 crore. Overall, working capital loans in India came down by 270 crore. With respect to the divestment of mobile non-core assets, we have completed the sale process and have received the proceeds. In line with our announced dividend policy, Board of Directors has recommended a dividend of approximately 120 crore, payout in excess of 20% of the net profit generated during FY 2024. This represents more than doubling of the dividend paid for FY 2023. There has been a delay in the rollout of the first set of candier showrooms as the last financial year was a year of transition for the platform. We launched 11 offline showrooms in Candier during the last year, taking the total number of showrooms to, th to 13 as on March 31st, 2024. 
for the current financial year as well keeping in mind the similar set of objectives we have set certain targets we have drawn upon up, uh, our plans to add 130 showrooms in india 80 kalyan and 50 candiyar and we will also open six showrooms overseas during the current financial year free cash generated during the current financial year shall be utilized to further reduce the working capital loans by around 350 to 400 crores by march 2025 we have also initiated discussions with banks for the release of real estate collaterals associated with the working capital loans reduced during fy 2024 which could be then divested to lighten our balance sheet further and now talking about the ongoing quarter we had an excellent start to the financial year despite continuing volatility in gold prices and ongoing general elections across various parts of the country we are witnessing encouraging momentum in consumer demand especially around the wedding purchases during the current quarter and akshay tritya advances today is akshay tritya and we are seeing strong consumer walk ins across all the showrooms thank you and uh, hand over i'll hand over it to sanjay he will read you through the numbers thank you ramesh good afternoon everybody I'm really happy to be talking to you all after a great ending to the financial year. Starting with some numbers on just concluded quarter, our company reported a consolidated revenue of 4,535 crores, a growth of over 34% compared to the corresponding quarter in the previous year. Consolidated EBITDA was 306 crores versus 257 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. consolidated profit after tax pat was 137 crores versus 70 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year this pat growth is optically looking higher please bear in mind however that the previous year pat numbers were suppressed by a one time write off of 32 crores in q4 of last year after adjusting for this one time write off the growth in the operating pat is about 34% Now let me give you a break up of the financial year performance between India and the Middle East starting with India. In this just concluded quarter our India revenue was 3876 crores versus 2805 crores compared with the corresponding quarter of the previous year. Our India Q4 EBITDA was 263 crores versus 217 crores when compared with the corresponding quarter of the previous year and india profit after tax came in at 131 crores for the quarter compared to 66 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year i draw your attention again to what i just mentioned a while ago the one time write off that happened in the previous year was pertaining to the india books moving on now to talk about the middle east business Middle East business revenue for the quarter was 624 crores versus 549 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. EBITDA in the Middle East was 46 crores versus 42 crores for the corresponding quarter of the previous year. And the Middle East business posted a profit after tax, so a profit of 10 crores for the quarter compared to 6 crores for the corresponding quarter of the previous year. Moving on to our e-commerce business, Candier, the company posted a revenue of 36 crores in the quarter versus 32 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. The quarter recorded a loss of 70 lakhs versus a loss of 1.9 crores for the corresponding quarter in the previous year. Talking about the full year numbers, for the full year FY24 on a consolidated level, revenue came in at 18,547 crores. and consolidated profit of a tax came in at 595 crores with this i'm done with the summary of the financials and 
we'll now open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wish to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use a handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Gaurav Jogani from Axis Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on the great set of numbers, sir. I mean, uh, your margin expansion has been also helpful uh, in the challenging time. Uh, so my first question is with regards to actually the debt reduction. I mean, you know, uh, though we look at a net debt basis, you know, the debt has come down only by around 250 odd crores in that sense. And, you know, we have received around 150 or uh, 130 odd crores or I would say net 100 crores from the sale of planes itself. Uh, so, you know, what explains that the lower debt reduction in that sense? Yeah, so uh, the, the the plan was to reduce around, what, 300 crores. So it ended up in, say, 260 odd. Uh, 435 crore non-GML actually we have reduced okay 170 crore additional gml we received from banks after a lot of negotiations okay so this was the initial plan itself and if you see this year the franchisee model which we have actually chosen is capex is going to be from kalyan and only the inventory comes from them so that is why the initial plan itself was only to reduce around 300 crore debt uh, forecasting all this and aircraft, of course, 25 crore more amount is yet to come as of March, which has come now as we speak. Uh, okay. So, sir, one related question, I mean, to this part only. So, if you look at the inventory, uh, absolute inventory increase also, I mean, you know, given that we have now moved to the, the franchise model, uh, ideally yeah. shouldn't be the absolute inventory amount be much lower, uh, you know, versus the, the sharp increase that we have seen by OI. Uh, of around, you know, 1,200 odd crores. So inventory levels have gone up, yes, by around 1,000 crore in India, 1,000 odd crores. Okay, so there we have to understand that, first of all, we have opened around 58 showrooms in the financial year, wherein we will have to keep some pipeline inventory for the same. The gold prices have moved by around 14% during the year. Inventory, of course, we have to maintain volume wise we will surely reduce some volume because when the price go up but we cannot reduce by 14 percent itself okay so there we'll have to put some meaning the money will go to inventory and ssgs you see it is it has been very strong around 12 percent and to maintain those ssg levels also uh, we will have to add inventory in certain stores certain areas over and above certain stores which we revamp to actually capture market share, we will have to add additional inventory there also. So all put together, uh, that is what you see, okay. So if you want a split up of approximate numbers on these, I can give you in a few minutes, uh, meaning so that you get a better sure. idea. Sure, sure, so that will be helpful. I okay, think the last bit, uh, 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 a couple of minutes, of course we will move on, but I will come yeah, back to you uh, on the numbers. Sure, sure. Uh, so my next question, you know, is with regards to you know, the CAPEX, as you mentioned, you know, that because the CAPEX was being incurred by you this year around, and hence we had incurred around the 370 crores out of CAPEX this year. Uh, yeah. So what kind of CAPEX now can we expect uh, going ahead in the next couple of years? And in that context, what will be the net debt reduction targets that you would like to give? Yeah, so two questions. One is uh, CAPEX investment for next year and the year after that. Next yeah. year, as we have mentioned earlier, we have signed 80 franchisee stores for Kalyan, out of which approximately 50 are in the new model, wherein the whole investment comes from the franchisee partners. The rest 30, the capex for the uh, those 30 stores, we will have to put. So keep three three and a half core into 30, maybe 100 or core for that, plus the asset maintenance capex 
uh, that will be what around what 100 150 crore so overall the capex will be in the range of 250 crore okay okay for the next year now you sure. talk the year after that the 100 crore will also be not there because all the showrooms which we expand will be under the new model wherein capex will not be put by kalyan so there it will be only 150 crore so here okay. 250 the year next 150 and again it will continue that way okay okay so that is the okay. question number 1 second is debt reduction so as i mentioned in my intro the plan is to reduce around 350 to 400 crore next year and again 400 to 500 crore the next year next so that's the whole plan within a couple of years as we have mentioned earlier there will be only gold loan in the book we would like to reduce the working capital limits completely from india the non gmo uh, sure costs. sure sir uh, thank you for this and sir i'll come back in the form of questions Sure. And one second, uh, I, I, I think Abraham is ready with the numbers. Uh, which okay. Okay. Yeah, go on. So the the pipeline inventory that we had to invest was uh, roughly about 200 crores. Uh, we also invested around uh, 300 odd crores into the existing showrooms because of the price rise. Um, and we also uh, kind of. Uh, the year in inventory uh, because there were some showrooms which were uh, supposed to be opened in the first week first second week of april so those showroom inventory also we were keeping at the end of the year that was close to 200 crores yeah sure sure and okay and the existing shores we had the about 300 crores so so the abram little bit 200 crore pipeline 300 crore existing showrooms Price high, 200 end of the year, right? So that is like that last year. Uh, that is basically the uh, refurbishment of the existing showrooms. Okay, sure. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We a reminder to all participants: you may press star and want to ask questions. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and want to ask questions. We have our next question from line of Ashish Kanodia from City. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. So the first question was uh, in terms of the Sorry store opening. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. So Ashish. Uh, can you please be a little louder? Uh, yeah, is this better? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Ashish. Okay, so uh, you know the first question was that uh, you know we historically we have seen that in some quarters because of the GST or some other reasons, you know there were few stores with uh, which would be opened as a company stores and then subsequently get converted into franchise stores. So at the end of you know the current financial year, was there any uh, such stores which was you know uh, at the end of FY24 it was basically a Coco store, but then. subsequently either that has already been converted into franchise or will be converted into franchise store in the same next one to week or, or something like that no so all the 58 showrooms which we opened during the financial year in india all the 58 are franchise store meaning in, there might have been own store converted to uh, what do you call franchise later but fully if you see you know the whole year 58 new showrooms we opened all 50s 58 are today are uh, franchise stores except one a couple of showrooms like in bombay and all we had to convert our own store also because the stores were near to that so called proximity like uh, meaning matunga or matunga right yeah so matunga store was our own store for the past 3 years which got converted this year otherwise all the stores were converted to franchise stores which we opened this year sure sure And uh, secondly, uh, you know, uh, if you can just uh, give uh, some ballpark SSG trends which you have seen in uh, April, uh, because you know gold price has been uh, uh, pretty uh, volatile. So just uh, trying to get a sense that in terms of SSG, what kind of a trend you have seen in April? So April has been strong, as I mentioned. It has been the footfalls are there, uh, except for the first one week where the gold prices were going sharply high. otherwise then we saw customers coming back akshatrudhya as we speak is also strong what we will do we will because it will be deceiving if i tell only april ssg because last time akshatrudhya was in april and this time we are in may okay yes. so there has to be a degrowth in ssg if in, only if you look at april versus april because akshatrudhya comes april last year right yes. so we are 
we will surely try to come up with an, a revenue update uh, post the weekend uh, because then it will be apple to apple because first 40 days versus last 40 days or something that we are really trying on right abraham we will yeah, we'll really try on. okay sure sure was that helpful but the momentum is strong just for your yeah. as we speak yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure, that's great. And secondly, you know, like, uh, you know, from a competition perspective, right, and at least what we pick up is that uh, the competition, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of the players have started to give more discount, etc. So, you know, what changes have you seen from a competitive intensity perspective in the last, uh, say, three, six months? Has, has there been any change, whether by local players, organized players, uh, anything which you can call out? I presume that your question is, about competition is related to margin right uh, yes ma- margin also competition also, comes in yeah. many ways no competition comes when you uh, when competitors have better inventory better uh, campaigns or uh, mm-hmm. what you call better locations or something but your question goes majorly into margin right pricing yeah. yes yeah so pricing if you look at we have not seen anything drastically different over the past what four five quarters because the competition has all intensity has always been there in our industry and kalyan you know we are a very hyper local player so we are used to competing with local unorganized and organized players with around 30 to 40 percent of our regionalized inventory and which we price also very competitively mm-hmm. so we have not seen a major uh, difference in price competitiveness over the past four or five quarters and you see you know our margins have also been stable over uh, the last four quarters year on year no yeah. Yeah. sure sure and then uh, you know uh, since franchise stores have uh, scaled up uh, if you can just give a ballpark number in terms of what is the uh, share of franchise revenue for the full year i mean either absolute number or a or a percentage uh, you know so that just from a margins perspective we get a better flavor and uh, just uh, the other question i had was in terms of the you know net debt reduction plan which you said is to reduce by 350 400 crores uh, i presume that uh, this 350 400 crore is purely from the free cash flow generation that you would generate from your operating business and if there is uh, you know any further sale of the non core assets the land then the net debt uh, reduction could even be higher is that uh, is that understanding correct no so we have uh, we, meaning e 350 to 400 that why i have kept a range of 350 to 400 because it depends upon the what do you call the uh, liquidity which comes again because of the asset sale because asset sale is not as easy you know first of all we have to get that asset from the bank then we we'll have to put it on sale so we have budgeted a certain amount for that but even if that does not happen the range will be between 350 to 400 crore Yeah, so and uh, the franchise revenue if you can uh, help with that uh, for, from a full year perspective the franchise revenue approximately for q4 was in the range of 25% the franchise revenue uh, share and for the full year will be around 820% uh, sorry for the full year it will be around 20 yeah oh, sure sure okay thank you so much yeah. thank you sir A reminder to all participants: You may press star and want to ask questions. You may press star and want to ask questions. We have our next question from the line of Deepak Podar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, hello. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. Okay, uh, that's great. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you very much uh, for this uh, opportunity. Um, so first up, just wanted to understand now this new showroom we are t- uh, we have we have spoken about one thirty. So eighty Kalyan stores all are Foco model, right? Yeah, eighty all are Foco model. The only difference between the Foco model in that eighty is that fifty will be or fully funded by the franchisee partner, including the capex. The rest 30 only the inventory will be funded. The capex will be put by Kalyan. That's the only difference. Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, Mr. Siddhant, are you there? Sorry, sir. We have the line for the participant disconnected. We'll move on to the next participant. We have a okay. next participant from the line of Shirish Pardesi from Centrum Brooking. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, Ramesh uh, Sanjay Abraham. Hi, hi. Yeah, 
just two questions in the beginning. Uh, you have especially said that you want to expand your Middle East and also in the other geographies business. Can you throw some light? What are your aspirations for next one and a half, two years, three years? For India and uh, outside India. Outside, right? in, outside India. Yeah, India, we, I told you, it's like if we want to open 80 Kalyan and 50 Kandir for the next financial year. Sure. Okay, and we would like to add 20% at least more footprint every year. Meaning, if I if we open 80 next year, we would like to go 20% more than 80 in the next financial year. Correct. For India. Yeah. And uh, Middle East or outside India, 6 in the next financial year. And it will go in that range for the next two, three years. There, the only difference is that focus is not only in opening new stores. We would like to really convert our existing stores into franchised ones and reduce the capital invested in that region. So there are two primary focus outside India. One, open six showrooms a year. Two, convert a few showrooms every year. And in the next couple of years, try to make Middle East uh, a predominantly franchisee-driven market by reducing the invested capital in that space. Okay. So if I understand correctly, at the current juncture, you are at 36 stores in Middle East. Now, this 36 of that are two franchises at this time. One. One. One franchise, yeah. So the risk is that one can become five or six or seven, whatever it is there. Yeah, so franchise number will keep on increasing. And in so addition to that, you will add six more stores. Yes, exactly. So there will be opening new stores through franchise, but you will see conversions also over and above the six targeted. And inquiries come from different parts today. Inquiries are there from Singapore or UK or Canada, Australia. But our focus now is Middle East and entry into the U.S., which we have already started. The process I have already started, and the first store in U.S. will be own store. Okay. So U.S. stores will be operational in the next one quarter or two quarter. Now uh, it should it should be <coughs> ideally before the end of H1. Uh, okay. The first one. Yeah. Okay. Second, I just wanted to have some broad understanding. <coughs> Our non-South sales used to grow upward of 70, 80 percent, which in this quarter obviously I give the best effect. Uh, has grown 55% to 1900 odd crore. Now, arithmetically, if I reduce a 16% SSG in the non South market, I get a number of 38%, uh, which is primarily a number which matches uh, with the store expansion, what we have done yeah. in non South. Mm. So, my whole question is that this SSG is driven by the ticket size or driven by the volume or driven by something else. So, Give some qualitative comments that to how this SSG in the near term is stronger despite the gold prices over last uh, 90 days were very volatile. And why I'm asking this because if you need to understand whether this double-digit SSG will be defended on a high base in FI25 as well. No, we, we surely don't recommend to budget a double-digit SSG. Okay. The SSG which has come last year has been excellent, meaning Q1 was 15, Q2 was around 10, Q3 was again 12, 13, Q4 was again 15. So that is not the way we should really budget for because that is a very strong SSG. Okay, And this Q1, you imagine, we are trying to grow over and above the SSG which we done 15% last year. So SSG is 7%, 6% is the best way to budget for. But however, what we see on ground today as we speak is much higher than that. And uh, that is predominantly the new customer walk-in. There is a portion of ticket size growth. And volume versus value, it is the same old slogan, wherein uh, if, if the gold prices are very high, volume will come down, value will go up, because people have a budget for what they can buy. So uh, now SSG in south is in the range of around 17 to 18%. Now, south SSG is in the range of 15 to 15. Okay. For the last year. 38% okay. is new customer growth. Okay. My second question is on the south business. Uh, despite the south business is overbanked in terms of gold, 
uh, when I look at the competition, they have also reported a very strong set of numbers. So, so what exactly happening in the South market? Are we trying to have the discounting and promotion as a tool and to grab more footfall and customer? Or really the competition is weakening and the branded players are expanding their market share? The South is already a 50% organized market. Okay. And again, I mentioned price factors no more there because for the past four or five quarters, we have not done anything major to uh, improve on the pricing for the consumer. It has been stable. Why the revenue is coming? Because of many, uh, and it is very strong in non-South also, no, if you see. Non-South also is in the range of 16%, South yeah. is in the range of 18%. Yeah. So across the country, there has been a strong, uh, what do you call, uh, SSG, predominantly because of the new customers which we have acquired over the past two, three years, especially during COVID. And the only area where we put more money today, even though I mentioned that there is no competition on the margin front from competition, but local players have also started spending on ads. Even unorganized player, semi-organized regional players have started to spend more on ads, where we are also investing a bit of money than budgeted, because we have to have that, uh, what do you call, uh, the noise level has to be there. Otherwise, then... Uh, there can be a, there can be a loose in market share. Okay, the share of voice has to be there in terms of marketing. Otherwise, there is no pressure on gross margin or price competition is not prevailing for the past four or five quarters. No, the reason why I'm asking, uh, yeah. if I go back three years before, <clears throat> and in the initial conversation, our story was that we will increase the non-south revenue. Today, non-south revenue is around 49 50%. 50%. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of when I use the same lens, uh, our margins has come down. So the point here is that if we need to build the more number of franchises which will come in the non-South market and if the strategy is going to continue, how this margin will look like? Because what we said three years before, non-South revenue scale-up will happen and our margins will improve. But in reality, the margins has not moved upwards. No, no. So margin, I think margin is not improving. So South actually revenue grew by 25%, non-South revenue grew by 55%. Okay. okay. So growth in non-South is still happening. Why you are not seeing a growth in margin is because we came into franchisee model. Franchisee margins are lesser no, than own store. So franchisee margin comes at 8%, whereas my non-South margin is 20%. Okay. So there will be a degrowth in margin. But PBT margins will go up because the franchisee PBT is 5%, whereas owned store PBT is only 4.6, 4.7%. So PBT margins will go up, ROC will go up, but gross margin will come down, EBITDA will also come down. Okay. So aspirationally, uh, again I'm going back to ROC, that we were aspiring 18 to 20%. Now, in the current state of strategy, do you think we'll be able to exit uh, 18, uh, end of 25? Yeah, so ROSI expansion will is very strong because you know that you, if now for the next year model of franchise, again ROSI is going to be much higher than what 60-70% which we have for the franchisee model wherein CapEx is invested by Kalyan <coughs> because their investment comes only in the pipeline inventory. Sure. So ROSI is much higher. And our focus is to grow by franchise view for the next couple of years. So OC should be in the range what you mentioned okay. uh, shortly. One last question. Uh, have we now framed the dividend policy? Yeah, we, I mentioned it's between 15 to 30%. And this year is 20% of uh, profit approximately, okay. which we have uh, okay. announced. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Anurag Dayal from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for taking my question, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First is I want to understand about you know seasonality. So Q1 has traditionally been a strong quarter for you, given higher salience of South. Now with the share of non South growing, uh, how does this impact the seasonality? So it stands or Q1 could be weaker now compared to what you used to do earlier. Even in North markets, Q1 traditionally has been weak. 
So some view on the seasonality basically for you right now. Yeah, so Q3 is now our best from revenue because again, Diwali and non-South revenue shares approximately about 50% as we speak. And then Q4, I mean, after Q3, Q1, and then Q4, and then Q2. That's how usual scenario it works. Okay, so it was similar, I think what you mentioned earlier as well last year, hasn't changed still. Q2, Q1 is second best basically for you guys. Second best. So Q3 is the number one. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, secondly, on this, uh, you said in non-South you make 8% gross margin, but now you're converting in South as well. But we, went, we don't know exactly how the franchisee rate is there, even the gross margin also tends to be much lower. Could you throw some light on it, how the economics is working in South? Yeah, so South again, it cannot be one model across South India because Kerala was differently from Tamil Nadu to Karnataka to Andhra Telangana. And it's very early, we are only having two franchisee, South franchisee as we speak. So, uh, and we are flexible on the working also with the franchisee partner. So we will come back to you once it settles down. So too early to speak too much loud on it because we ourselves have not come to a conclusion on the model because four states work in four ways. Okay, got it. Uh, so uh, thanks for actually sharing the SSG numbers. I would really love that you start giving retail sales as well. You know, in a sense, you know, franchisee also is gaining a lot of scale now. Yeah, yeah uh, sure. We will come up with it. Uh, thank you. I don't have more questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ali Asghar Shaki from Motilal Oswal Financial Service. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I just had a you know same question on your margin. So you know, of course, as you mentioned, your PBD margin has improved uh, uh, despite uh, the franchisee. It had you know, the franchisee shift. Uh, I just want to understand from an EBITDA point of view. Uh, you know, so I mean, uh, your EBITDA for your fourth quarter standalone is probably you know uh, reduced around 90 bips. Uh, and maybe the cost margin also, uh, I think about close to around 130. So can you just explain out of this how much uh, would be the, you know, impact because of the franchisee, uh, you know, uh, and uh, is there any impact uh, because of any, you know, pricing uh, or, you know, uh, basically making charge impact that we are seeing in other players in the market? No, as I mentioned earlier, gross margin, we don't, winning. you see the numbers, there is no pressure on the gross margin and on ground also, for the past four or five quarters, we have not had any pressure from competition because we have, our price is already set to prepare for competition in certain products where the competition prevails. The EBITDA margin will keep on degrowing because all the incremental revenue which comes it is coming with 5% EBITDA. Our own box is closer to 7.5 to 8. So EBITDA will be keeping on degrowing because franchisee revenue share will keep on growing. Correct. So India Q4 PBT before exceptional has improved from 4.4 .4 to 4.6. That is the way we have to see rather than EBITDA because EBITDA will be keeping on degrowing. Correct. So, safe to assume this decline in EBITDA margin is only because of that and there is no other impact because of any reduction in the making charges that you would have seen? Yeah, yeah, only because of that. Only because of that, right? Yeah, yeah. Nothing, okay, safe, nothing, nothing on, no, uh, nothing. What you call, except that the EBITDA margin, there, there might have been a, de, de, what you call, a small dip because we would have invested some more money for advertisements because there has been competition from the from the unorganized and regional competitors okay. in terms of spending money in their market. That's the only area where we have invested money. So there, there can be a, what we call, effect in EBITDA, but not on gross margin. Correct. So just to, I mean, uh, we was a question, let me show EBITDA, if I see gross margin of 130 bips, is entirely because of the uh, shift from uh, basically owned to franchise. No uh, change because of the making charges or pricing of gold, right? Nothing, nothing. Nothing. Understood. This is clear. Uh, second thing is on Candia, sir. So we are about 13 with revenue, 13 stores, and uh, uh, I think now we are moving to the franchise driven model. You also mentioned that you have you know, uh, uh, 
uh, quite a decent amount of uh, you know interest here right? so just uh, you know want to understand a little longer uh, you know three or five year story in kandia uh, we are aggressively increasing our store and so you know where do you think this in reach in three to five years and uh, given the fact that it is right now uh, just around break even right or it is marginally loss making uh, i just missed the numbers so you know how do you, do you expect uh, the profitability to move over three to five years hello sanjay here so i'll just take this one so presently we are laying the foundation for the offline expansion and at the same time we are taking a calibrated approach in driving the pure online piece of the business the business is you know continuing to go through a transition phase both at operational and the management level um like we guided in the past uh, we are on track to do another 50 stores this year we already got about uh, 10 operational as of uh, march 2024 we started building the leadership pipeline and strengthening management there but uh, we think it's not yet the right time to kind of uh, give a picture on the financial model and how it will look like say 2 3 years out but i think we should be able to come back to you uh on this one by the time of uh, say q1 uh when we end uh, this year we should be able to put some uh, projections out on how the financials will look sure so uh, this is useful but even qualitatively because the, i was just thinking given that you know it's uh, still uh not uh, profitable so you know i mean uh, accelerating pace uh, with the 50 store addition uh you know i mean uh, what gives you that confidence uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know i mean uh, if qualitatively you can just help a little bit on the you know outlook and profitability yeah so here uh, ramesh here so we have done lot of ground work on how to take candier to the next level and that is the confidence which we are working on but execution why we are delayed for the last financial year is because on the management level we have brought in new talents oh, okay. on the mid level management we have brought in new talents and focus is on expansion of physical stores and that transition was there last year and that is why we took a small pause but otherwise on uh, the conference in candier that is because of the work which we have done over the past uh, one year as in where to take it forward okay got it so i'll uh, you know, probably take this offline thank you so much yeah thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of bhavya gandhi from dayal and dalal and bro stock broking please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity just wanted to have a broad level understanding uh, what impact will we see when if there is you know sort of change in the gold prices on the downside so will it like take a hit on the revenue or how will it how will it be like if you can you know uh, explain from your past experience yeah so as i have mentioned earlier gold price sudden impact like if if it goes up very high over a, over one week or if it comes down in a week people take a pause they wait and watch where this is going to settle down and then start coming to the stores again that is the only impact the revenue can move from one quarter to another but the de- the demand will never be lost and wedding demand the postponement or preponement also does not happen too long because the wedding has to happen and they cannot postpone the demand uh, postpone the purchase too long so otherwise there is no impact in gold price coming down or going up oh. on a mid term long term level Got but of it. course when it comes down people take more volume when it is very high people purchase less volume because they come with a budget they will not be able to exceed that budget because their pocket does not increase uh, if the gold price increase also right and what would be the average ticket size for fy24 so uh, approximately what 1 lakh approx 1 lakh rupees and what was it last year if at all you can give some number to compare so it was in the 85 range 85k 85 range and uh, uh, just wanted to know on the hedging policy are we 100% hedged or uh, we do keep some exposure now we don't take any price risk nor price uh, what do you call gain 
because we are, we, as I mentioned before, we are always hedged. 100% hedged? That is what? Yeah, 99%, 98% hedged. Okay. Because okay. there are, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, just if, uh, if you can share, what would be the average rate on the gold metal loan? Just a second. Yeah. So 3.75% is uh, in India. 3.75% in India. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. That's it. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Pallavi Deshpande from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, I just wanted to understand uh, uh, the advertising spend what was it this year versus last year. And second was, I think there was a guidance of uh, on a standalone basis we'll do a PBT margin of 5%. So we're still a little shy of that. Uh, any color. Okay. Right? Can you repeat on the PBT? I did not get you there. Yeah, so I think there was a guidance at the beginning of the year of a 5% standalone PBT. No, 5% was standalone PBT for franchised stores. That was the guidance and that is almost in line. Not wow. the total franchise because our own store PBT margins are in the range of 4.7. New franchisee stores come with a PBT margin of 5%. And franchisee revenue share is approximately 20% for the full year. So, uh, the PBT margin has to be in between 4.7 to 5, which is what you see. Right. Okay. Okay. And the advertising expense for this year versus last year? Oh, yeah. yeah hi. In India, it is 1.9% uh, for this current quarter versus 2.1% uh, last year. No, so you mentioned that it's gone up and that's what the margin. So for the year yeah. of... Yeah, yeah, we'll explain. We'll explain. No, that will, you will not see on a percentage-wise because the revenue also has the franchisee revenue. Okay. Right. On an, oh, as an amount, it would have gone up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, so then, then as a percentage, then it's not really impacting that margin. Uh, you know, you were saying that it's impacted the margin. Uh, no. One second. Eh? No, it does. Uh, because for all the new showrooms that we are launching, uh, um, ideally speaking, we were we were not budgeting for any extra ad spends, so that would have actually come in and given us five percent. But if if that means then the leverage on the uh, ad spends on the own showrooms would have been should have been higher because of the revenue growth that we are seeing, because the SSGs have been significantly higher, twelve thirteen percent SSG for the year, so the leverage should have been much higher. The leverage is not uh, as much as we thought it is because we spend a little higher. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Pulkit Singhal from Dalmas Capital Management. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. Um, my first question is on the franchising margin of 5% PBT. Uh, you know, as the business expands, obviously, you know, as you yourself are seeing, double digit SSG versus high single digit, and you know, mix also changes. So, actual business margins will be more volatile at a franchising level. But uh, is the understanding very clear that we get only five percent, irrespective of whatever be the margins earned at their end, or do we also participate in case uh, there's an increase in business margins? Yeah, so it's not like that. Wherein. Uh, five percent is, uh, is assuming twenty percent overall gross margin at the store level. So if the margin goes beyond twenty percent, right, we will have a share for that also for the increased gross margin. But since we are expanding into tire two, tire three, tire four cities, even though twenty percent at our own store level, non south, it is actually more than twenty. But that are all in metros, mostly. So since we are going into suburbs, we assume only 20%. Right, but that and is more to do with the... Higher margin than 20, better not do. Wherein, because 20 is the right margin to uh, target for. But, but scale also does have an impact, right? I mean, so while you're focusing on gross margin, but I'm saying doesn't scale of the business impact below the gross margin to also create... Or leverage on the business margin. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, but we have meaning we are spending on ad and 
uh, what you call uh, stuff now employee cost also we are investing okay and uh, it's front ended also because we will have to employ the staff at least 2 to 3 months before and then only we can post them to the new stores because then only they will become a kalyan kind of employee and uh, add also we are we are in at this stage when we are growing into new markets we are we are getting strong ssgs at the ground level when we see competition also from the unorganized organized in ad spends uh, we we don't go in that way so leverage will be there but i suggest that we don't bake uh, too much leverage into projections and let us earn it when it comes so okay point i'm just trying to understand how the contract is structured is it structured such that uh, any kind of leverage benefits or whatever there is should there be so that goes to him so no, that will go to him because for us okay. the only advantage when the, when the margin goes up at the store level we might get better than 8 because there can be a share there also for the future franchisee stores which we are signing there we have baked in all what you expect that, that that's why we are not telling how much margin for the new franchise stores uh, it is it can be more than 8 it can be more than 5 on a on a evita level okay understood and secondly uh, if, if you look at this quarter i mean your pbt margins have gone up from 4.35 to 4.55 Yeah. Uh, is this in line with what you had expected initially, or is it coming slightly lower or better than what you were thinking? This could. No, maybe what we would have missed it by around what 10-15 crore, uh, meaning uh, more or less 10 crore, because of mainly, okay. majorly because of advertisements. Okay. And and that's what I'm trying to understand. So going ahead, I mean, full year we are at 4.77. There'll be higher mix of franchisees, but uh, you know, I mean, how do we see this? Four point seven seven moving the pace of it. I'm trying to understand going ahead. Is the competition intensity uh, significantly increasing? Because you know the market leader is clearly calling it out, right? And they're saying that they're going to uh, kind of. Uh, we don't. We cannot talk about them. Uh, but for Kalyan, we don't see competition intensity in pricing. Whereas we just want to maintain the market share or maintain the targeted market share. We have to have the noise level in the market. where we see that the local competitors are spending money on campaigns but to for you to budget in uh, for own store level pvt margins cannot go up too much there will be, will be some leverage but uh, if you if the ssgs are only what 6 7% the leverage will be smaller so new set of stores franchisee will come at around 5.25 franchise pvt margins will be at 5 own store cannot grow up too much but of course there will be some operating leverage which will step in okay but in case let, let me put it this way suppose uh, finance cost is right now 1.5% of sales for you in the standard yes. yeah now uh, and as you getting more cash flows uh, and your revenue will go up and your absolute yeah. finance cost no there will be a leverage finance cost 100% there is a leverage i spoke about EBITDA, okay, but finance so, cost there is going to be leverage for own stores. Exactly. So I mean, so far we are focusing on PBT, and we have to consider yeah. finance cost as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, there is going to be leverage in PBT so, margin for uh, own stores because cost. Uh, finance yeah. cost is, will come down as we are reducing our debts. So theoretically, over two three years, therefore, because I am considering the finance cost as well, we our business model can cross the five percent PBT margin as well. Yeah, yeah. Have to be back to five percent. Of course, yes. Of course, yes. Because of two, three reasons. One, all the new franchise stores are budgeted for approximately five point two five, and existing stores BBT are already in the range of four point eight, which can go upside of five because we are in a debt reduction journey. So all put together, BBT margins should see above five, maybe in what maybe give it a year more. Understand. Right. Yeah. Great. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Pritesh Cheda from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, just two questions. Uh, one, uh, the pace of debt reduction at 4500 crores means that 400 crores means that you reduce your interest cost at about 30 crores 
30-35 crores per annum. Considering you will first reduce a corporate loan, which would be about 8 to 10 percent uh, rate of interest. Yeah, yeah. We will only reduce that. We will not reduce our. Okay. We will only reduce our loan. Yeah, yeah. But theoretically, a point in time, you so will also. 30 crores for the full year. We know on a yeah, yeah. Point of crore. Yeah, it's spread across the year now, and predominantly loan reduction will come in H2 because I told you 80 showrooms, 30 is our capex, which will be all in Q1, Q2, because that model we stopped signing a one quarter before, right? So yeah. interest reduction for this finan this financial year will mostly be in the second half. That's okay. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you will basically reduce at about 30 crores. Uh, assuming it was eight percent of four hundred crores, and if yeah. you are, let's say this year's cash flow, if you have a thirteen hundred crore EBITDA, you manage to reduce at about three hundred crores. So next year onwards, you can reduce at about four hundred crores. So that's the thirty crore hundred. On the depreciation side, we'll actually enter into a situation where the depreciation number doesn't expand, right? Because if you are not putting capex, you don't have a asset to depreciate for. So this 275, 280 crore depreciation stays where it is? Yeah, so depreciation cannot increase too much uh, because we are not, except for the, what you call, uh, the stores which we have. So it it, can, it will not go up in the direction which it was going up. But it will still increase a little bit, right? Pardon? Will it increase a little bit, the depreciation number? Uh, Forget yeah, next year. Forget the next year. Any case, you're moving to a uh, model where you're not putting any capex or inventory. Yeah. So we, of course, we do create certain assets, but no, you can you can put it as flat because it will be very marginal in case if it increases. Okay. And what is there in the other income number this year? So it is rent received from the. Uh, franchisee partners because what we do is that the premise we take it for lease and then sublease to the franchisee owner because we don't want the premise to sit on the franchisee books. Oh. So it started with effect this year, right? Last June. Okay. okay. No, meaning okay. last June means not the meaning the June uh, FY 2000. 25, yeah. 23, yeah. Okay, okay. Done. I'm done with my question. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Siddharth Dunn from Goodwill Wealth. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, I wanted to know the sales number, uh, you know, including the one-time sales to the franchisee partners, you know, the, the new franchisee stores or the ones we converted to franchisee. What would the number be? No, we, we put a ballpark number, 58 into, say, 20 crore. That is the one-time revenue. Okay, 58 into 20 crore. Yeah, yeah okay, yes, perfect. That's, that's an approximate number, yeah. Perfect. This will be the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yes, thank you very much for participating. So, uh, see you all uh, shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you. On thank behalf you. of Kalyan Dwellers India Limited, that concludes. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.